So whenever I start a new world, one of my early game focuses is always about getting lots of resources produced as early as possible and also giving myself as many building materials as possible early on. That way for all my future builds I have plenty of materials in place that I can build them out of. I like to have the choice, I like to have as wide a palette as possible and one thing that we haven't done yet in this world is concrete. You'll see there is no concrete in any of these builds. <laughs> so today we're going to focus on getting ourselves a concrete machine made. It's going to be fully automatic and a afk uh, which is absolutely perfect. So we're going to head over to where we've got all of our AFK farms and keep it in the same area because obviously that's what we do on here. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to make an automatic AFK concrete farm from scratch. Okay, so we're here at the AFK platform that we've showcased before with our iron farm and sugarcane farm and all of that good stuff. Uh, so what we're going to do now is uh, set up a little smart piston here and the concrete farm that we're going to build is going to go off in this direction and uh, that will become apparent as to why that is later on in the episode. Uh, so to build the smart piston, the first thing that we need to do is place a block down here like this with a redstone dust on top of it and a redstone torch on there. We then want to place a block here like this with a piston facing in this direction, just like that. Now, if I place a block down here, you'll see the piston pushes this along in this direction. Very good. So that's what we're going to do with our concrete uh, to get it sort of away from us and into the system. However, we can make this quicker by placing a piston down there like that. Now we can see the difference in speed. Alrighty, so you see that is just about instant, right? It's uh, as close as you're going to get, and certainly it's fast enough for what we want to do. So now what we need to do is we're going to be placing concrete powder. So we need a way of turning the concrete powder into concrete. So to turn concrete powder into concrete, it does of course need to pass by water. So what we want to do is we know that the concrete powder is going to go along in a line like this. So we need to build a water source block just up here. Now you can build this out of whatever you like, but uh, I'm going to use glass because I think it's going to look kind of nice. So we're going to place a glass there like that, one there like this, <laughs> one over here as well. Uh, and then we're going to get rid of that. Uh, now, eventually, uh, this will be all concrete powder, but to get us started off, we need to encase the water so it does not spill, just like that, and we can get rid of that. So this is just a temporary block, just like this. Now, we'll see it in action now. Basically, what we're going to need to do is... Do I have a crafting bench here? Uh huh. So, after adding one crafting bench to the area, <laughs> what we need to do is uh, grab ourselves some sand, some gravel, and some dye. So the recipe for concrete powder, you can see it here, it looks like this. Uh, now you can put these in different orientations, it doesn't actually matter, there's no uh, sort of hard recipe for it, but uh, essentially you're going to need four gravel, four sand, and one dye per eight concrete powder. Uh, so basically uh, you can think of this as uh, any dye that you have here it gives you the concrete powder color that you want. So there we go, we've got a load of white concrete powder. I find that white concrete is nice to build out of, so we're going to start off with that one. Alrighty, so what we need to do now is right click here and hold it down for a second. And you can see there, we've now got a line of concrete just like this. Uh, because we went a little bit too far, this has happened. <laughs> um, this will not happen when the system is complete, don't worry. I'll uh, come on to why that won't happen uh, as we get to that stage of the system. But uh, as you can see here, now the concrete powder has been turned into concrete, and that concrete is holding the water in place, so all is good in the world. <laughs> so we can now get rid of this block right here, just like this. Uh, so, that's the first step, right? We get the concrete powder, we turn it into concrete, and it goes over there. The next thing that we need to do now is group it all together so that we can then basically destroy it and collect all of the drops. And we can do that using TNT, because uh, TNT now does give you a 100% drop uh, of the concrete. Uh, so let me go and get the next bit of the system in place, and we'll see how we're going to build that. Okay, so the next stage in this farm is basically the concrete's going to get pushed over here, and then we want to push it downwards, get it down away from here so we can drop TNT down to blow it up. So that's exactly what we're going to work on right now. Uh, so what you want to do is in line with where your powder or concrete, I should say, I suppose, by the time it gets here is going to be, you just want to build off this way a little bit. So we're just going to come off here, maybe five, six, seven blocks, something like that. Uh, so that's going to go there like that. Very good. Now what we're going to need is a load of pistons. So I've actually got a load made up here in my redstone chest. So let's uh, grab those a second. Uh, now what we need to do is have a piston at this level facing in a downwards direction and a piston on this level above it facing up. So I might start about about here, I think. Give myself a little bit of space, right? Uh, so that's what we're going to look to do now. So I'm going to place 
uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, and five, like this. So these ones are the easy ones. Place them all along here, just like that. There we go. What's a little bit trickier is to get the ones underneath them. Uh, so what we're going to do is build along here like this and get rid of these blocks we just placed the pistons on, because that's just to make them face upwards, like that. Uh, and now we need to get underneath. Now, uh, there's a couple of different ways we can go about this. What I'm going to do is in here, I've got some trap doors. Uh, so we are going to build up here a little bit so uh, I can build one there one there like that put the trap door there and uh, get myself down at the right level put these along here like this that should be enough like that so now I'm crawling underneath now what I can do if I get this right and this is tricky don't get me wrong it's not an easy thing to do but there we go so we can crawl along like this and build them like this and this is really like all why I sort of started this series is because doing things in survival can be a little bit tricky right it certainly can be different to doing it uh, in creative mode and it's things like this that you can uh, I can show you a bit better on camera uh, in survival mode right so that if you're doing it in survival mode hopefully it makes it easier for you um, so there is what we're going to be left with at this stage I'll just show you how that's looking so that's that's right right now that's how we want that to be so we can get rid of these blocks here like this uh, we need to get rid of all these blocks underneath as well uh, that's where the concrete's going to get pushed along to. Uh, let's get rid of a few of these here like this, uh, and then we can get on with the next stage. Okay, so next up what you want to do is run a line of solid blocks along the back of these pistons right here, just like this. And then I'm going to use glass here for the redstone component that we're going to put along the back. So we need a block there just like that, very good. Uh, and using glass is going to be useful, and uh, I'll show you guys why that is in just a second. Uh, but then let's just come out here a little bit, give ourselves a little bit of space. Because uh, the next thing we're going to do is going to be a little bit tricky. We need to get underneath this again. Now, what I want to do is just quickly show you another way that we can uh, get underneath. Because uh, the trapdoor is one way that works, uh, but sometimes it can be better to do the water bucket trick. So, what you want to do, uh, if you need to get below a build like we're doing here, you can place a water bucket down like this, get in the water stream, and come and build down just like this. So, build down a good few blocks there, so we can use those. Now, let's now uh, swim back up to the top jump back off here like this we can grab the water up uh, we can start making a little platform down here now and get underneath this easy uh, so you know some of you will probably know that trick i'm sure but uh, i do get a lot of new people that watch my videos as well so i try to mix things up a little bit and give tips for everyone okay so after this glass block we need some temporary blocks here like this and then we want another glass block along the back like this so down one diagonally from them like that now these temporary blocks are useful because we can also place them here like this because that's where the next one is going to go very good uh, now we're going to need to come around to the side just like that very good uh, and the next thing this is going to do is actually come down another one diagonally so we're going to need some more temporary blocks put in along here like this and then some glass along the front so you're going to have something that looks a little bit like that at this stage we can jump up here and get rid oh so the odd fall is all part of doing tutorials in survival mode, guys. <laughs> it's just uh, par for the course. So I'm just going to sleep while I've got the opportunity here to turn it to daytime, just because I think it's probably easier for you guys to see what's going on. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, get back up on top of our machine here. And uh, let's see, how can we get down? Let's build that one there like that. Okay, great. So we can walk around here uh, a bit more carefully. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll do this so I don't fall again. But uh, yeah, then we just want to get rid of these temporary blocks here, right? So we can get rid of all of these, just like that. Very good. Okay, so now you've got these glass blocks going like this and like that. These here are also now able to be gotten rid of at this point. Uh, very good. Okay, so uh, with all that in place, uh, the next thing to do, you want to get yourself some redstone dust like I've got here and place it all along. Now, uh, so did I, for some reason, I guess I missed these out, so put these two in place. But uh, yeah, you need all of these done. So all of this redstone stuff is going to connect up with each other. Don't worry about that. It's not going to be an issue. Uh, we'll now build up here and get the redstone on top as well, because we do need to run redstone across the top of these as well. So here is why we're using glass, guys. It's a transparent block, so it is now able to connect up through these blocks. Uh, and we want to go up here just like this, finishing just there like that. Okay, so that's how the redstone is going to look at this stage. So uh, this is how the machine's going to be looking. We can get rid of these blocks here. These are temporary, all of these uh, stone blocks. But you should have something that looks like this at this point. So this is how this side will look once it's done. Uh, and now we need to do the right-hand side. Uh, so to do that, what we're going to do is bridge off from this one here like this. Get ourselves a little platform going again. 
and uh, I'll just uh, build out here to give myself a little bit of space. Uh, what we're going to need is some furnaces and some comparators. So I've got the furnaces on me. Uh, here's my comparators. There we go. All right, we're all set. So we only need five furnaces for this, uh, and we're going to have comparators all along here like this. So uh, one, two, three, four, and total five comparators. Two, three, four, total five furnaces like this. So we'll face all the furnaces there. Is that five? Yeah, okay. Uh, then we want comparators. Two, three, four, and five, just like that. Uh, now what you want to do at this stage, you're going to need five stacks of blocks you don't really care about to sit in this slot here in the furnace. So I'm just using cobble, uh, you could use whatever you like. I actually don't think 64 is necessary, I think it works with uh, 54 or 55, I think it is, something like that. Um, but it's cobble and I don't care, <laughs> so I'm just putting a stack in each. Uh, and you can see now that is on. Okay, I made a slight mistake guys, so I'm just going to uh, skip back a little bit here. So once all this is in place, essentially if you have a solid block here like this, you can see that instantly gets pushed down. Uh, now, I'll explain the reason for this if we jump up here. Uh, but essentially, uh, this comparator right here from a full furnace is going to put out a signal of strength 5. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it finishes on that block right there to power that piston. Uh, and it cannot interfere with any of the other pistons over here. It just automatically will push that down. Uh, now, this is not something I came up with. I wish I could say it was. <laughs> I think this was originally uh, Mumbo design. Uh, I believe that's correct. If not, I, I apologize to whoever the original creator was. Uh, but yeah, so uh, now we can see the system in action, right? So if I place a load of blocks here. Hmm. Uh, so I had to do a little skip again, guys. I was just having a slight problem that I hadn't encountered before, um, where when I was placing uh, the concrete powder down, it was falling here. So I think just by having this solid block here, this is going to work. So if I just hold down here, right-click for a little bit, you see that's very quickly... Uh, that was me misplacing it, by the way. That was... Uh yeah, not the, not the machine, just to show you that. <laughs> um, so it's very quickly getting pushed over here, and then very quickly getting pushed down that way. Now what will happen is, if I do this for long enough, uh, this one will reach its limit. Let's jump over here. And then this one will start to form. Uh, so I think it has a push limit of 12. So I think we get 12 down there. And once that's happened, then the next one comes into play, and you have 12 here. Uh, that's why we have the 5. It's a little bit overkill. We probably could have easily gotten away with maybe just doing 3 or 4, but I just wanted to be on the safe side. So uh, this is the concept of the machine so far, right? I've showed you how to build uh, both sides of the pistons there. These are obviously temporary blocks that we can get rid of, by the way, uh, so you don't need those. Uh, and I'm sort of uh, showing you now how it's going to work with uh, the concrete getting pushed that way and pushed down. Uh, so the next bit to build really is the uh, TNT duplicator to drop TNT down here and blow up the concrete once it's been made. Uh, so And these are all temporary as well. Uh, so that's going to be kind of the fun bit. <laughs> so uh, let me have a little uh, look at that, a little play around with how exactly we're going to do that. And then uh, I'll show you guys how to make it. So next up, we've got the uh, the fun slash scary bit, because <laughs> this is when we place our TNT duplicator. Uh, so I'm going to be using Il Mango's duplicator for this. Uh, so I'll put a link to his video in the description. You guys can check that out. Um, but it's a very good design, so it makes sense to use it. So uh, what we want to do is figure out exactly where we want our TNT to drop. And uh, this seems to be a good spot right in the middle, right? So uh, we want it in the, in the middle of this, so uh, in line with furnace number three. Uh, and then also we want it as close to the furnace as possible, so just one block behind. Uh, so then we want to place a gate like that, and we can place one underneath as well. We can open this one here, but leave that one there shut. We then want a fence gate, uh, a cobble wall gate, I should say, uh, placed there like that. The reason the cobble wall is placed next to the gate is so it connects up. Okay, good. So that's how uh, this is going to look at this stage. Uh, now, uh, at this point, you can chuck your TNT on where it's going to go, which is basically on top there. Uh, so let's try and place that. There we go. Just down there like that. Uh, we also want to place a block up there just like that. So if I come back here, that is what it's going to look like at this stage. Next up, we're going to place a couple of glass blocks on the side of the TNT. So we're going to put one there like that and one just in here like this. Now, the purpose of those glass blocks is to hold the TNT in place. It's very important to get the TNT lined up correctly uh, in order for this to work. So at this stage, you'll have something that looks a bit like this. Next up, we need to grab our slime blocks, uh, and we're going to go over here, and we need to place these uh, in a specific way. So basically, what we're going to do is place uh, one here, 
one here and one just up there like that. Very good. Uh, get rid of these here. They were just temporary scaffolding blocks. Then we need to place one there, one there, and finally one there. Uh, so if I just run back over here a second, you'll now have something that looks a little bit like this. This is how the slime structure will look uh, when that's all in place. So you've got like an L shape and another L shape, basically, uh, at varying heights. So hopefully that is pretty straightforward and you can see how that needs to be placed. Okay, so with your slime in place, you're now going to need a dead coral fan, a detector rail, and a minecart. So a dead coral fan, you can get them from coral reefs. I was lucky there's some nearby. You have to silk touch them to get them. Uh, and then what you do is you'll have a normal coral fan. You just place it down on the ground, and after a few seconds, it turns to a dead one. If you silk touch that once again, you'll get your dead coral fan. Uh, so let's have a look here. We're going to need a little bit of scaffolding again here to just bridge off from this. We need to get around to the side here. Okay, good. Uh, so the dead coral fan needs to go just under here like this, one away from this TNT. It is important that it is a dead coral fan as well. So uh, it needs to be the case. Uh, okay, so we can get rid of these now for a second. Uh, and let's go back around here because we're now going to jump up on top of here. Okay, very good. And we want to place a detector rail uh, just like this uh, with a minecart on top of it like that. Okay, come around here. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need to do is uh, we come back this way a little bit. Uh, we need to get a sticky piston facing in towards this slime block. So uh, I've got a sticky piston here, place it in just like that. Okay, great. So now I'm just gonna get rid of uh, these blocks a second and then show you uh, what it should look like if you've done it correctly. Uh, okay, we get rid of all of this, just so there's no confusion. And uh, this is what it's gonna look like. So there's your L shapes from before with a sticky piston facing into that slime block, a minecart there on top of the detector rail, and uh, once again, the location of the dead fan coral is just there. So not next to the TNT on that slime block, but one further over. Uh, so that's sort of the next part of building this machine. Okay, so it should now be done, um, but uh, we don't want to test it just yet because it would blow up because the TNT is going to sit there on the fence cave. So the next thing that we're going to do is work on a timing system so that when this gets triggered, uh, essentially uh, the TNT will be a light and it will wait there for a while, but the fence gate will then open so the TNT can fall down and blow up our concrete. Uh, so let me get the uh, timing system in place and uh, then we'll have a look at how that's going to actually work in action. Okay, so we're going to need to play around with the timing uh, a little bit here. Uh, but what we're going to do is grab ourselves some uh, repeaters out of here. And we've got some redstone dust on us and stuff, so that's good. Uh, we're going to put the repeaters going into this fence gate right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go, eight repeaters. So this one needs to be on three ticks, so you right-click it twice. The others need to be on four, so you right-click them all three times. Uh, now this is the timing that Il Mango suggested in the video that I have linked, uh, but we may need a different timing. Uh, but you can test it yourself to uh, what timing is going to work the best. Um, of course, you do want to be careful that your TNT doesn't blow up, so you may want to test this in a creative world first, uh, otherwise you might blow up some of your hard work here. I am going to put faith into this system uh, and let's see how we go. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, I just want to power this right here uh, so if I um, power this right now um, you know one thing to say is that uh, the, I'm not powering the TNT right now I'm just powering the fence gate so I'm testing that uh, I mean if you're gonna build the whole system before you test it you know you might want to do that in creative but if you do what I'm doing here you can flick this lever like this and you can see there's the delay before that gate then opens and obviously if this was a pulse it would then shut again after so it's ready to hold the next TNT in place um, so that should work in terms of if we flick that like that, so you pulse signal it, you can see there the delay, it opens. Now in the time it took for that delay to open, I just know from experience the TNT is not going to have blown up, so we should be okay. So we're now ready to do a bit of a test run. So what we need to do, uh, we can get rid of this lever a second, uh, is basically we need to power this and at the same time we then need to get the signal going up to that piston. Okay, so moment of truth guys, we're about to do our first test uh, where we actually fire off the TNT. Uh, so just to show you how this is going to work, uh, basically from the little platform I've got over here, this is the same timing and everything that you just saw. And we're just using glass to uh, ladder the redstone wiring upwards. Uh, of course, glass allowing the TNT, the TNT, the redstone current to pass through. Uh, so then we just need to have an input for this, right? Because uh, uh, everything else is going good. So we can just kind of put the input here like this. 
And let's see how we go. So I'm going to flick that. The TNT has been lit. Yeah, that's why you should test in creative first. <laughs> yeah, I've just blown up everything I've just done. Um, that sucks. Let me go rebuild that a sec. <laughs> Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I fixed everything up. I, I hope I've got it right this time. Uh, just to have a look at what we're, we're doing here uh, to see the difference. What I've done, let's just get rid of these blocks here. These were temporary. Uh, so I've run the current from here uh, using a repeater to draw it out of this block right here and send it off on that way. And uh, then the stairs going up like this. So this is how it looks. And uh, yeah, if all goes to plan, this one will work. Please, please. <laughs> and yeah, there we go. It blew up quite a lot, didn't it, of the uh, of the concrete. But uh, obviously, we want it to blow up the stuff that's lower as well. So I think actually it needs to be released a little bit quicker than that. Uh, so we can play around with the timing with this. This is the good thing with this. What I'll do, let's just make things a little bit easier here um, for us to get to. Uh, but let's uh, maybe put this one on that length and see how this goes obviously we're not wasting any tnt because it's a uh so yeah that looks about right to be honest uh i would say that's that's pretty good now uh, once i've got this machine in full flow i can probably play around with the timing a little bit more uh but at the moment this is the system we have so a normal repeater there then this one here just a normal repeater and all the others set to maximum delay or right clicking three times so obviously that's like default one two three all of them are on that so um yeah, that, I mean, that's the the sort of production and destruction of the concrete in place. So the final thing that we want to do now is get a tray to collect all of the drops. Uh, and that is why, I think I brought it with me. Yeah, I've got all of this obsidian here with me. So uh, for those of you who've been watching my previous episodes, you'll see there was one that I dedicated solely to uh, how we can get uh, unlimited amounts of uh, obsidian very quickly and very easily in a renewable way. And the whole reason behind that episode was for machines like this, <laughs> where I'm going to need a lot of it. because so I'm going to build the tray out of obsidian. Obviously, when you're messing around with TNT, as you've seen a minute ago, <laughs> things can go wrong. And uh, you really don't want to be uh, caught in a situation where you're blowing up your, your own machines like I just did. So obsidian is the way for down there so that if the TNT falls down, it's not going to destroy the tray. Uh, so uh, let me jump down, get things in place, and then I'll show you guys how to build the collection system for all of your concrete. So for the uh, collection system, we're down underneath the uh, machine right now. Obviously, uh, the actual concrete is in those five lines right there, and most of the time just those three. Uh, but with TNT blowing it up, it could obviously uh, extend a bit of a range. So what we're going to need to do is uh, get somewhere over here and kind of make a tray that extends out beyond the perimeters of just uh, what we can see there. So I'm going to go a bit overkill on this, um, but uh, you know I think it's better to do it that way than to not have it big enough. Uh, and this was obviously the point of getting all of this obsidian. So the good thing about kelp is uh, it makes it so much easier to place blocks in the ocean now. And I've placed one here, which is a bit uh, not right. So let's maybe go uh, one, or oh, hang on, let's get rid of that so we can actually place it. But let's go one, two, three, maybe four over here like this. And uh, we're going to build it around the perimeter here. Now, what I think I'll do as well is I'll go up a few blocks because obviously once it's collected, it's going to go into uh, hoppers and chests. And obviously, the more of those we can have, the better. I'm going to go one more for luck. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, maybe six. Yeah, that's probably going to be about the right sort of height. So all I'm going to do now is just build an obsidian wall here around the edge for like a bit of a tray. Uh, and make sure I encompass this whole area very well. And then I'll show you guys how we're going to do the infill and the water system. Okay, so here is the tray that I've gone ahead and built. Um, this here is roughly uh, the middle. Yep, there we go. We're in line with the concrete there. So there should be plenty of space either side it and uh, in, in all directions uh, for it to collect in here. Obviously, uh, you know, if not, I can maybe make it bigger, but I, I do think that'll be okay. Um, so in terms of the dimensions, uh, you can see on the inside here, we've got a platform of one, two, three, and four. Then it drops down to a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this here is going to be number eight. This is going to be our item collection area, though. So uh, we're going to run hoppers all along here, so the water will end on that level. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, just get ourselves a temporary block to place down here like that, and then place a double chest in here. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, now we can simply run our hoppers uh, into that chest going all along like this. 
Um, and then from that chest, obviously, we can do whatever we like, put it into more chests and that kind of thing. Um, I guess this is kind of a uh, hopper intensive design, uh, but I do have a, an iron farm. So, I mean, it's, it's not really that bad. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And uh, what we'll do is if I place a water bucket up here, you guys will see how the water's going to run down and just end there and all the concrete will end up in there. Uh, so you can, of course, use just two buckets uh, and place them one there, leave a gap, place one there. Oh, uh, I thought that was going to create a water source in the middle. Doesn't that normally do that? <laughs> have, I, have I gone mad? I guess I have. I think that's because... Uh, the way this is, the water is going to flow down in that direction. Okay, well, luckily I am surrounded by water, but essentially you just need to make sure you've got a water source block on each of these. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now, and then hopefully we can start testing this thing in action uh, as like a final test. Okay, as we can see, the tray is now complete down there, and uh, say so hopefully it is big enough. If we come and stand just up here and look down, you can see kind of the catchment area around it. I'm just a little bit worried about these blocks here, but we'll see how we go. Uh, so we can now start testing it, really. What I need to do uh, just grab out uh, a load of concrete powder. And let's maybe try like a half stack on top of what we've already got there. So let's place this in. And it is pretty quick, as you can see. Uh, is that getting a bit full? Uh, kind of. Not too bad. Uh, we're going to see, I guess, if it reaches the bottom or not. Let's place the final few in. Uh, and let's just see how this goes. So, fingers crossed, guys. This is the first live test. So, let's go here where we can have a look. Okay, well, it certainly blew it all up. And it seemed to drop just fine. Um, let's maybe try that again. And uh, see how it works if it's not completely full. Yeah, it only blows a few up then. So, it really needs to go... Um, so the TNT, let's see, it's falling a little bit too far down, right? So we need a slight extra delay on that. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add two ticks to this, I think. And then what I'm going to do uh, is get out uh, just 16 more to place down. Here we go. And we'll see how the timing of this one differs. So extra two ticks, let's see. Yeah, that's a lot better. I don't, I don't want to get it any closer <laughs> up to here. That seems to be a lot better. There doesn't seem to be a problem at all. All the concrete seems to be collecting there quite nicely. Okay, so uh, this now works. Uh, the final thing that we need to do is basically... Uh, actually, there's kind of two things. But one is to run a clock into this. So obviously, we don't want to be doing this manually each time. What we want is when we're here and we are uh, sort of AFKing it, we want to just be able to do that for as long as we like, and this is all automatically destroying it, so it's on the right time to drop the uh, TNT for us. The other thing we want to do is get a, a dropper set up here uh, that can be feeding us concrete powder as we do this machine. So then we can just make up chests and chests and chestfuls of concrete powder, have it all just being shot into us automatically. We just stay here, hold down right click, and uh, we can AFK that. So uh, yeah, let's get to work on these clocks and the uh, dropper system. And uh, then this will be completely automatic and totally uh, finished. Okay, so for the timer uh, to release the TNT, uh, I've got a little area here. What we're going to do, we're just going to run uh, a hopper clock to do that. There's obviously all kinds of different clocks you can make, uh, but a hopper clock seems to like a, a good idea for this one. Uh, so what we're going to need is a repeater going into there with a comparator going into the repeater. Uh, the reason being is that the signal that's going to come out of the hoppers for the comparator is going to be too weak. So if we had a comparator here instead, the signal would not go up here. It would only get into here. So uh, the signal would be taken from the block by this repeater, but would not have enough to go up and, and on its way. Uh, so that's how we're going to do this. Uh, so what we want to do now is if we place a uh, block down here, um, place a couple down here. Let's see. So we want to be in line with this. Grab ourselves uh, our hoppers and run them down this way like that. So I think we're going to try uh, 10 for the timing for now. Uh, so then we can also run them from here going like this. So we need to create a constant loop with our hoppers just like that. Uh, and then the final thing is to get rid of this one right here, feed it into there. So now when we have an item in this system, it will just be on a constant loop. And what we can do is power this hopper right here. And uh, if I put an item in there right now, you'll see it just sits there. So this is going to essentially be an on-off switch for the entire system. So uh, right now, that is powered on. Yep, okay, so that is uh, that means that's stuck there. So right now, that is off. If we flick that switch, that turns the system on. This will start up, and then we go over here and do our AFK. Um, so 
one thing I am going to do is uh, just put some glass on top of this. Uh, obviously, then no mobs can spawn on top of it, but it prevents any items accidentally going in to the system and messing up our hopper timer. Just a bit of a safety precaution. Uh, then what I want to do is just chuck in any random block, and it's on its way. And there we go. We should see this now working. So we're going to watch this for a little bit, and uh, yeah, there we go. That's that's going to be good. So that's just going to continuously work. And when we have had enough, we flick the lever, and it stops. Perfect. Uh, so uh, that's all in place, the, the on-off switch and everything. Uh, I'll tidy all this up in a second off camera, make sure no mobs can spawn up here, and uh, just kind of trim off anything we don't need, you know. Uh, and then uh, the other thing we're going to do now is get a bit of a system set up here where we essentially want a dropper shooting lots of concrete powder at us, and we also want to have a little uh, area, like a little building that we're in, so that we're protected when we're AFK in here. No phantoms can get to us, and if any mobs do spawn up here, they cannot get to us either. So that'll be the next step that we do. So in terms of the dropper, uh, what I've done is I've figured out, well, I'm going to be stood here, right-clicking at that piston to place my concrete powder that gets pushed off that way, of course. And uh, so that's where I need the dropper to be. Now what I can do is uh, run a hopper down here like this and have a double chest like that. And you know, we can even add another double chest on here. So this gives us a whole lot of uh, potential for putting the concrete into the system. Uh, so that's very good. Um, and then what we've got here is a switch. Now when I flick this switch, you'll hear that the dropper goes crazy, just like that. So it's a very fast clock. Uh, now the way this works, we've got an observer there with the red bit facing the dropper, and we've got an observer here with the red bit facing away. Uh, so basically, uh, they're both sort of observing each other and, and sending a pulsing signal, and that's what happens. So if we were to put items in here um, like this, they get shot out very quickly, just like that. Uh, obviously, at the same time, uh, I'd then have to turn this on, uh, so I'd probably, I'd, you know, you turn this on, you turn this on, you stand here. So that's all very good. Uh, the final bit now, I just need to put this all in a nice little case so that no mobs can spawn up here and get us when we're here AFKing. So after a little bit of uh, further testing, this machine really is working great. Uh, apart from one thing, all of my concrete, well not all of it, but a lot of it is gone in the sea. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we need to obviously do something about that. And uh, what we're going to do is just put a wall along the back here. So basically at about this level here, like this, we'll wall this in. So then uh, that would hopefully uh, stop that problem. So just thought I'd mention that. Obviously, uh, if you guys are building this at home, you don't want to have this problem. So just put yourself a little wall along here like that, and uh, that will mitigate that. I'm going to go and get all of this now, and uh, then we'll rejoin the episode, because I actually figured this out a little while after filming the episode. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to edit this in somewhere that seems appropriate. And just for good measure, I've tested this machine again with about eight stacks of concrete powder. So that's a pretty uh, good test, pretty in-depth. Uh, just to make sure that the uh, the concrete that we saw in the water, now that I've built the wall, uh, will all end up in the chest. Because I did have a thought that maybe the explosion was forcing it to go over there, which I don't think is the case. Um, but we're going to go and have a little look together. So let's jump down here. And, okay, good. <laughs> we're seeing exactly what I want, which is nothing. I don't want to see any concrete in the water there, which there isn't. And if we go look in the chest now, uh, yeah, it's all in there, or uh, at least in the hoppers on its way to there. So, yeah, that's very good. Uh, we now uh, have a system that completely works, so I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> so, I wanted to make sure I did all the testing for you guys, so that if you are building this at home, uh, or something similar, that it works as expected. Alrighty, guys. Well, this system is now completely complete. <laughs> Everything is now in place. Uh, we have, obviously, uh, the hopper clock to have the system running automatically, the dropper in place there to give us the materials, and uh, this glass box is our AFK room, so it prevents anything from spawning up here and also keeps us safe with the iron door, of course. Uh, and then we have some lights throughout here. Um, not all of these lights are necessary, but I thought it would also look nice at night if it was a, a bit more lit up. Uh, I do need to still light up the top of the obsidian down here, so I'm going to do that in a second. Uh, I'm also going to just chuck a light up here and a couple other places that just need brightening up. But essentially everything is in place, this is how it's going to work. And our AFK area and our you know, automatic farm area is really coming along quite nicely actually. Uh, 
Uh, eventually, I want to turn all of this into some sort of massive building structure because at the moment, it just looks like a mess of farms. Uh, but I'm, I'm certainly happy with uh, what we've got here in terms of the, the product we've got with uh, all the different machines that we have now at our disposal. So there we have it, guys. A fully AFK automatic uh, concrete farm for Minecraft 1.15.2 and beyond. Now, if you liked today's episode and you want to see more like this, please do consider liking and subscribing. It truly is greatly appreciated. Uh, but for this episode, that's about all now. So uh, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.